Welcome everyone to the introductory class of marketing research. Uh, in the last uh, uh, semester, we had uh, floated a course on the same name titled marketing research and analysis in which I had tried to brief you about the basics, the uh, you know the internal, the concepts and theories behind the study of marketing research and how one can understand the topic and then carry out uh, use it in its future research right. So, uh, this course is uh, in, in addition to the first in which you are trying to understand more deeply the subject and uh, uh, in this uh, course my highlight the highlight would be on or the emphasis would be on mostly how to uh, analyze your data, how to statistically you know uh, calculate and analyze your data infer from your data. But uh, let me uh, let us begin this uh, 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 begin this session begin this series of lectures through this introduction to the this subject right. So, what is marketing research? What is it com encompasses? What is comprises of basically? So, as you can see the term marketing research is quite broad right. So, uh, generally we talk about marketing uh, research. So, the area of expertise that comes to our mind is the social sciences right, social sciences management where mostly it is an applied research and sometimes there is some fundamental research element uh, involved in it too. For example, in psychology, in social science behavior. So, we have seen how people behave in certain uh, conditions right how do they react and uh, uh, what kind of products they demand, what kind of uh, you know uh, channels they follow. So, these are uh, certain areas of uh, interest for people who are uh, basically conducting the research in this field of study marketing or social science for that. So, let us start uh, begin this uh, lecture series with, uh, with this example, the first class with an example. This is an example of uh, the use of marketing research techniques at Royal Ahold and uh, is a company which is basically uh, you know chain, it is basically a retail chain. So, it is a supermarket leader basically and uh, in Netherlands and uh, this company operates 6 chains with 1750 outlets including its flagship Albert Hygiene supermarkets. Worldwide Ahold serves 20 million customers weekly in 3400 stores across 17 countries across the globe for example, in countries like USA, Central and Western Europe, Latin America and Asia. Customer orientation is at the top of the fundamental principles of this company. Its credo is that customer comes first, however big we become, however international it is ultimately the customer who determines our success. So, this company says that in order to stay ahead, in order to survive in this competitive market, we need to ultimately satisfy our customer right and we would like to you know uh, understand them well for that. So, following uh, this is the uh, you know list summarizes the ways that this company listens to its customers to maintain its customer orientation and continued success. What does it do basically? So, these are some of the points produces an economic analysis and forecast. So, this company is continuously doing some economic analysis and forecasting the demand and uh, you know the behavior. So, it does this by gathering economic sec the secondary data right from secondary data are those data which are available already in some maybe reports or some database and intelligence that gives it an understanding of retail developments since it is in retail. So, retail developments the competitive threats and the market changes. So, how is the markets behavior changing? How are people changing? How are the consumers psychology changing? How are the consumers patterns of purchasing changing? All these things come into this. Then it uses and contributes to the audit data right. It sees its stores as a major market research laboratory. This is what it says. We see our marketing research you know uh, our stores as research laboratories, marketing research laboratories to study our customers. It knows when they come in, how often and what they buy. So, they are keeping everything in track of the customers and details about the customer, how do, when do they come, what time do they come 
uh, how many times, what is the frequency of their visits and when they visit what do they buy right. Fundamental to these observations is the use of scanner systems and loyalty cards. That means, uh, there are systems to detect every movement of these people within the store right. It uses focus groups as a major source of information. As you know what are focus groups? Uh, focus groups are uh, basically uh, a group of people who are uh, maybe who have knowledge about a particular product or service and they are asked to discuss right freely. So, that when they discuss many things unfold, many things come out which are generally not known to the uh, company uh, beforehand maybe. So, uh, it uh, uses focus group as a major source of information about how customers and non customers feel not only the customers, but non customers those who are not our customers how do they react to our brand of uh, stores or our uh, products in the stores right or our services for that uses observation approaches. So, they are basically observing maybe through the scanners and all these things. So, they are observing to watch how customers behave in store using protocol tapes right. So, basically observation of the uh, customers is very important because many a times it has been observed that for example, I will give you a small example. In one of the retail stores they observed that sales of one of the particular products was of uh, you know of particular product which was basically used for elderly people was going down. Now, the company tried to understand ki what is the reason, but they found no uh, you know almost nothing wrong in their product. So, they went to their distribution chains the stores where they were basically selling and they found that one of the major stores who was selling their product they were uh, you know they tried to observe them. So, when they observed this store okay, what the, how it was happening. So, they found that the store was actually keeping the product at the shelf which was slightly at a higher level. So, what happened as a result of it when they observed too many elderly people. So, the elderly people who had problem in their legs or you know in their knees they had pain. So, they were avoiding to stretch themselves up and try to you know uh, get the product from the top shelf. So, the company uh, realized that maybe this is one of the problems that the people are facing. So, what they did was they requested the store to bring it down to a height which was you know. Uh, optimal or it uh, was uh, comfortable for these elderly people. So, by doing this they, the result was very uh, very you know uh, very very good and positive result and suddenly they found it grew up right. So, uh, this is uh, another interesting uh, example I, I, I can tell you uh, that uh, there was uh, if you um, you know there was one uh, very famous uh, book series. So, they had this is this book series was a on detective books fictional uh, you know fictional books. So, detective. So, the cover page of the book was little you know uh, very uh, red in color uh, uh, and uh, it was it had some very uh, violent uh, scenes in the uh, cover page. So, the company found that people were finding it difficult and they were finding it uncomfortable to keep such books in their houses in the presence of their children. So, as a result um, the, the people were sometimes avoiding to buy such books. So, what the company did the publisher did they requested the author and they changed the cover page and they made it quite mild and uh, less uh, you know uh, violent looking on the top right. There was a grand success in the sales of the book the sales of the book increased by 40 percent just because the content nothing no, no change only the cover page which had the pictures of violence crime and you know all these things that was made mild and the result was there was a higher sales in books because people liked the books, but they were unable to buy it because they were they did not want their children to see such kind of stuff right. Now, coming back to our uh, case. So, now this company select some researchers to supply the raw data. So, how do they conduct the research? They select some researchers to supply raw data where it performs its own analysis right and interpretations. So, they conduct the uh, study, they collect the data and they analyze and interpret. While in some other projects, so it is a two way process, they use specialized strategic input from experts, expert some you know organizations which are uh, experts in that area of data collection and data analysis. So, they take their help also. In addition, it has an electronic market research platform 
e platform where researchers discuss their projects and any problems they have related to this company's store uh, you know the, the company's problems right. So, any retail chains problem. Market research findings is issued twice a year giving details of important papers, articles and reports on retail research from inside or outside the Ahul company. So, by doing this what the company is doing by uh, su suggesting the findings it is keeping their customers happy and uh, updated and the company the customers also are aware that the company is, uh, is quite up to date and doing its research and by that they have got a quite a positive opinion about the company. So, the vice president market research what he does tell about uh, uh, Royal Ahol. Researchers are backroom consultants, he tells this is the why uh, how this is the way he perceives the customers. Researchers uh, sorry about the researchers, the researchers are backroom consultants, I see the market researcher as a philosopher who can take a critical view of the internal and external world. The researcher can act as the serious fool to the court, the board takes on our ideas and our language, but the market researcher is not the spokesperson spokesman for the company, they are listeners and interpreters. So, what does he say? Basically, he is not somebody who would be you know, uh, uh, you know uh, giving his opinion, but he is a person who is listening and trying to interpret. right? So, interpreting the observ observing, listening to and interpreting, he is try is in one way showing us the path of what is uh, lie, you know lying in the future. So, how should we move in as a company, how should we move, what things should we take care of, how should we uh, help uh, you know uh, make our customers happy. Okay. Another example let us start uh, with this is uh, and research is also integral at Philips. Philips we all know is a very uh, popular company uh, dealing with uh, sound systems right, uh, color television, sound systems and all this. So, few years ago Philips consumer electronics determined what the market for traditional personal audio was diminishing, what they observed that they observed, uh, de determined and observed that the market for traditional personal audio was diminishing. Its researchers looked into what the key needs and drivers of teenagers, why teenagers, but teenagers were assumed to be one of the target segment where and came up with concepts such as adaptability, choice flexibility, sharing experiences and spontaneity. They selected a few of these as a basis for their designers. So, the companies product designers they were also involved to start developing products keeping these things in mind. Okay. They also meticulously identified the value proposition they wanted to offer with new products coming out of the designer pipeline. So, what uh, value additional value uh, they can add is, uh, they can offer to the customers they kept in mind and they designed their products accordingly. Subsequently, when a product was presented during the trial phase Philips let the researcher determine through qualitative research means qualitative research is where you just go through a kind of a focus group or you uh, go through some kind of a you know observation a Delphi technique you use uh, where you try to discuss talk to people right. Subjective things uh, also uh, you know you discuss. What the consumer saw as the primary benefits and concerns. So, what is the as per the consumer what are the benefits and what are his concerns right. Philips wanted to identify exactly why it would make a product for whom it would make and how it would differentiate from others right. After Philips had decided to go to market with these products a series of very small portable mp3 players cameras that fit on a key ring ok. It again turned to the researchers to test the advertising campaign that was developed for the product. So, first they came up with a small product right and they also say saw ki how people would like to you know it to get promoted in what way it should get promoted right. So, by doing this Philips uh, got remarkable success in its products because not only it understood the consumer psychology, but it also understood ki how do consumers uh, get attracted towards the product and in addition they also ensured ki what should be the proper distribution channel for the product. Okay. So, now we have understood what is basically the marketing research is covering right. So, as marketing research is a part of marketing therefore, we should understand a few things. Now, what is marketing? 
So, in the last uh, course also when I had begun my uh, you know uh, marketing and analysis, I had a few of this. So, we are trying to get an overview now, right. So, what is market, what is marketing and what is marketing research? These three things they are basically connected, right, with the word common word being market, market and market all the time. But market, marketing and marketing research, so there is some serious relationship, okay. In marketing the term market refers to the group of consumers or organizations that is interested in the product. So, if people are interested in the product it has a potential right. So, it refers to both physical products and services. It has the resources to purchase the product and is permitted by law and other regulations. So, two things are important that there need to be a as we say in marketing we say there has to be a need, a want and a demand right. If only need is there it is ok fine but then there has to be a want and demand. So, if need and want is there, but there is no demand still there is no point because the people cannot if they cannot pay they cannot buy the product then there is no point of uh, having a product right. So, it refers to the group of consumers or organization that is interested in the product has the resources to purchase the product. So, demand and is permitted by law that means you cannot uh, ensure you know you cannot think of selling an 18 year old a less than 18 year old boy or girl a maybe an uh, you know a, a product which is not desirable for their age right. So, the market definition this is a diagram if you can see how the market uh, is looks like. So, this is the total population right out of which the company identifies the potential market. So, the large population is there, but then which is the uh, potential market. So, we and the company understands and tries to research and find out ok well the potential market is only this much a smaller set out of it. Out of which although they are all potential, but is it really available can we really reach. So, after finding the available market they, they think of the qualified say they qualify ki out of this available market well this is all available market. So, this is the market which we can which fits to our requirements, but how many can we actually get into it is not key all the available market we can tap right. So, once they have the qualified available market then the company decides ok they are all qualified, but then what is the most which is the target segment we should be targeting because one which is giving us the highest premium or which creates a differentiation for us in the market or somebody where the competition is not that may be you know hot in such a condition we will try to decide a target market which is beneficial for us ok. And finally, comes after having the target market how much have we entered into the market. So, what is the level of penetration we have entered or we have entered into the market and how much more is left. So, we can decide accordingly. So, uh, as it says the market definition begins with the total population and progressively narrows ok. So, let us see potential market those in the population who have interest in acquiring the product. So, anybody who has an interest in acquiring the product is a part of the potential market. What is the available market? Those in the potential market who have enough money. So, the differentiating factor here is now money okay. qualified available market. Those in the available market that means, those who have enough money who legally are permitted to buy the product are they legally permitted okay, fine. So, this becomes our qualified then the segment of the qualified available market that the firm has tried to deserve. So, may be I will not try to although many people are there, but I will try to only cater to those customers who are may be having a particular uh, you know income level may be a very high income level only for them they are my target segments. For example, it is a BMW wants to sell its products. So, it will not try, try, try to target everybody correct. So, it has a very niche segment a very high premium segment so who can buy and they want to target them. Similarly, last is the penetrated market those in the target market who have purchased already purchased the product and so that means, if we take the target market and we deduct the penetrated market from that. So, what is remaining is the untapped market. So, target market minus the penetrated market is the untapped market. So, you can still untap you can uh, there is a potential for you right. Key points the value cost and price of items traded are as per forces of supply and demand in the market. So, market may be a physical entity may be a virtual market for example, today nowadays you find so many virtual markets in this uh, e-commerce space for example. Markets at present are not confined to a physical location only rather they are extended virtually right <coughs> as I said just. 
Markets are bifurcated as local, national, global, so they can be for a short or a long period. It can be divided as a wholesale market, retail market, financial market and so on. So, these are the different ways you understand the market. right? Now, what is the marketing definition? Marketing as AMA says, American Marketing Association is the activity set of institutions and processes for creating, communicating, delivering and exchanging offerings that have value for the customers, clients, partners and society at large. So, what is he saying? So, marketing is an activity set of institutions and processes for creating, communicating, delivering and exchanging in offerings. So, offerings are the products or services which the company makes and how do you exchange, how do you transfer it or send it to the public, right? you, uh, you know, make it available to the public. What is marketing research? How it has been defined? The European Society for Opinion and Marketing Research SOMR, defines it as the function that links the consumer, the customer, the public to the marketer and public to the marketer through information. So, the connecting the binding force is information in this case. So, the consumer, customer and the public right they are collected through the information. Information used to identify and define marketing opportunities and problems they generate what is the role of information basically. So, it is used to assess identify and define the marketing opportunities and problems generate refine and evaluate marketing actions the actions that we have taken how uh, how do uh, you generate them you have to refine and ensure that they are accepted by the public the by the customers right monitor the marketing performance so through information you continuously are monitoring your performance and improve your understanding of the marketing as a process now very interesting there is a case i remember of listerine listerine mouthwash that when Listerine uh, went into one of the countries, I think it was the case of Brazil. So, Listerine found that one of its products was uh, not selling well and uh, at in the you know uh, in the in the premium segment. Surprisingly, when they what they found was why the people were not buying in the premium segment, the reason they found was that people were finding it a very strong product. That product had a content of alcohol, right? And because it was very strong they did not like it and moreover some of the people were as they were taking some medication or something. So, doctors had advised anything against which had a alcohol content in them. So, when the company realized so they made different products other products for them ok. Key point to practice marketing to implement the marketing concepts to implement marketing strategy managers must make decisions and this is where the role of marketing research comes. So, marketing research specifies the information required to address these issues, design the methods for collecting information, manages and implements the data collection process, analyzes the results and communicates the finding and their actions. So, and their implications. So, basically, so the, the key thing is marketing research is helping you to collect information, right, to address these problems and then they collect the data, analyze the data and then interpret and infer you know what to be done in the future. So, let us see the role of marketing research within the marketing system. So, what is the role of marketing research? So, this slide uh, you know one thing let us see. So, how it looks like? So, first it is there is a link. So, marketing research is sent in the let us say is here and it is connected with the customer groups. Now, who are the customer groups? The consumers, the employees, the shareholders and the suppliers. So, these are the four basically uh, groups of customers who are con connected with the uh, any uh, marketing research uh, you know process. So, there are some controllable marketing variables product, price, promotion why is it a controllable because the mark the company itself can decide. So, what are the controlling variables for example, what product should I have, what should be the price of the product, how should I be promoting the product, what should be the channel through which I should be selling the product. So, these are the controlling variables, right? But there are some which are uncontrollable. Now, what are the con uncontrollable? Now, you cannot have a control on the economy. You cannot control the technology of the country or the the, the growth in technology. You control you cannot control the laws and regulations coming into this field, right? The social cultural factors, the political factors, we don't have a control, right? So, what does it do basically? It all these taken together, it helps in assessing the information needs it provides the information and thus 
market research helps uh, the marketers to take decisions right. Marketing managers after doing all this decision making process they it helps them to segment the market then segmenting the market means to divide the market into several particular segments you can say and then choose which segment do you like most to you know cater to and then identify the final target market right. What marketing programs would should be developed for these particular consumers right and customers and finally, after you have done some kind of a uh, you know uh, sales and you know some activity then how is your performance doing, how are you performing and how what control mechanism should you bring in to check in your performance and improve your performance. So, all these things to do all these things you need the help of marketing research. So, marketing research is without doubt there is no doubt that any any company for that or any uh, you know uh, any institution any organization without the help of marketing research they cannot survive in this uh, competitive world it is just impossible because if you try to survive on basis of uh, some gut feeling uh, you will uh, surely make blunders there is no doubt about it. So, marketing research has a very very prominent role and uh, companies that is why spend immensely on marketing research and try so that they can understand their customers and they can you know uh, bring out the best for their customers. I think uh, uh, we will continue with this uh, you know uh, uh, this lecture in the next uh, say you know next ne next class. Uh, I hope today's lecture was the introductory lecture was clear ki what is marketing research and uh, will have this briefing uh, would help you to understand it more clearly. Thank you very much.